host, Make Better Wealth Decisions, a podcast that explores how financial advisors' blind spots can harm your investments. I'm your host, John DeGuy, a portfolio manager with Design Securities in Toronto. In this podcast, we'll provide advice on how you can achieve better outcomes by maximizing investments and minimizing taxes. Let's put our thinking caps on as we consciously decide to get smarter about our money. In speaking with Greg Davies this week, we had a wonderful wide-ranging conversation about uh, different ways and different hacks that you might want to think about how you go about doing your own investing and how you give advice if you're a financial advisor, but also how you should think about what's right for you if you're an ordinary investor. And one of the things that we talked about that I want to go into a little more detail today is something called an investing constitution. Now, that could be very close to something like an investment policy statement. An investment policy statement is something that is seen as being a portfolio blueprint. I mean, how much money do you have in stocks? How much do you have in bonds? How often do you rebalance? Do you have a tilt towards small cap or large cap value or growth? That sort of thing. But an investing constitution is a little bit different. Like a regular written government constitution, you should be putting it in writing. It's the sort of thing that you should have as an evergreen uh, approach to how you go about doing your investing, what your philosophy is, what your values are, and the, the, the guiding principle behind doing what it is that you do. Once you've written it, you should put it with your statements and perhaps review it from time to time, not just a one-time set it and forget it kind of exercise, but something that you can review from time to time to make sure that it still suits your needs and is reflective of your, your, your values, your attitudes, and what you'll be doing. And here's where it really hits the road. What you're doing by writing an investing constitution is you're making a written contract with yourself, a promise with yourself. And it's more like a map than a compass points you in a general direction, but you don't know what kind of terrain you're going to encounter. A map tells you specifically, I'm going to go this far and then I'm going to turn here and then I'm going to go that far and I'm going to cross the river or, or what have you. And then I'm going to keep on going and then I'm going to turn somewhere else. It is a lens for decision-making and it will allow you to memorialize how you will behave in different circumstances. And I would therefore encourage you to be as, as specific and as detailed as you possibly can in thinking about what goes into the investing constitution. You need to know yourself and you need to pre-commit to doing whatever it is that you've written in the document when the circumstances present themselves. And they may not present themselves for years and you can't say, well, that was something I committed to in 2024. Or now that it's 2027, the world has changed. No, no, no. This is a constitution. It is the sort of thing that you should be able to use for the rest of your life because it is reflective of your values, your beliefs, and it codifies what you will do when you get to a certain circumstance. Now, there are various things that you can put into it. Triggers. When will you do something different? Why would you do something different? How much will you do if something needs to change? And you can do that both in terms of dollars and in terms of percentages, whatever makes you comfortable. And how long are you going to keep on doing this? Will it last for quarters? Will it last for years? How long will you commit to maintaining a certain strategy? So let's give you an example here. Let's say you, I will rebalance my portfolio when I see markets move significantly. And let's say significantly is a 20% drop. So let's say you start with a 60-40 portfolio, 60% stocks, 40% bonds hold their value. The 60% that you have in stocks drop. And so now you've got a, a situation where you've got a lot of money that needs to be rebalanced and you need to sell some of your bonds to buy some stocks. Will you do it? Hopefully, yes, because that's what you've committed to. But let's say we have another drop, a second drop. And so now when you have a, a situation where you have, let's say, I don't know, 500,000 in, in stocks and 300,000 in bonds, or maybe 550 and 250, now you've got to rebalance a second time. Now you've got to sell some more bonds a second time to buy some more stocks. Think about what you will do. Will you do it when there's a 20% drop? Great. If you commit to it, you should do it. If there is a second 20% drop and you honestly believe in it, what you're doing is you're buying the dip a second time and you're selling something that has hopefully held its value to buy even more when that asset class is on sale. If you can have the focus 
the discipline to actually do what you say you're going to do, you're much more likely to be a successful investor over time. We'll talk to you soon. John Degui is a portfolio manager with Design Securities in Toronto. The views expressed in this program are not to be construed as specific advice. It is recommended that you consult a qualified advisor before taking action. His books, The Professional Financial Advisor 4, Stand Up to the Financial Services Industry and Bullshift are available through Amazon and in bookstores throughout Canada. You can reach John at 647-STAND-UP. That's 647-782-6387 or at jdegui at designedsecurities.ca.